Welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about service data provider and array data provider. What you will learn in this video? In this video, you will learn about how to load data using SDP and how to use data load data using array provider. All these things we are going to learn. So before going to start, first discuss about what is SDP and what is ADP. So whenever we are saying that ADP, it's an array of object. In Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Services, Array Data Provider is a type that provides more flexibility to populate and manipulate data than Service Data Provider. ADP data can be set from business objects, service connection, aesthetic data and many more. We will learn about SDP too. So what is SDP? A Service Data Provider is a data provider in VVCS that connect to external services, APIs or database to retrieve and manipulate data. Friend, if you remember, whenever we are mapping any table object or the combo box object with the business object, automatically SDP variables created. And it's automatically invoke the endpoint for the business object APIs. And the SDP variable is stored the data of the response of that API. So yes, we will learn about all these things. For the same, when we bind business object with select one choice or combo box, and SDP is created under variable section. When you render the page, you have to select one choice, and every time when you click on the select one, it will make a call to be your rest or rest endpoint. So yes, obvious. Each and every time, whenever we are selecting values from combo box, it's calling the endpoint rest endpoint. Obvious, it will take much time. That's why we have ADP to store some aesthetic value. ADP keeps a copy of data array that you can access on the client, SDP doesn't. So if you want to access the data for further manipulations such as additional editable table scenarios, you will use ADP. ADP also gives you control over the when data is fast. SDP fast the data automatically when the UI components that require its render. SDP is more useful if you want to paginate the table, sometimes like while loading more when you scroll. ADP will be used if you want to customize the data before rendering the page. Also, if you want to edit the, each row on the table screen, you mentioned. So let's discuss all these things by practical, by creating the SDP variable and the ADP variables, all these things. Let's move to the Visual Builder application. So this is my visual builder application here. I'm going to use that one. So what I will do right now, I will add one heading and I will give the name as, let me make it is little small. At five. Yeah. And give the heading as SDP versus ADP. Now here I want to add combo box to display the data from business object. So in the combo box, I want just I just want to show the department only. So select the combo box, go to the quick start in the properties, and here we have option to add option. Select the business object. I will show you the difference between ADP and SDP. And here, what value I want to display? I want only display the department. I want to display department in label and ID too. Just go give the placeholder name as like select department. Go next and done. So once we're done with that, you can see the new combo box is added here and that combo box having the data from the SDP. You can see the employee BO list SDP. And from why it's came here, you can see go to the variable. You can see the new variable created that is SDP service data provider that variable. And this variable will automatically store data whenever user will click on this icon to add the value or show the value. So each and every time whenever we will run automatically it will display the data by calling the endpoint. So let me run this page and I will show you this thing. Now you can see page loaded and here you can see I will go to the in page inspect and go to the network as it's it, I know that it's going to call the rest point. So right now you can see we don't have any rest call. And once I will click here, you can see it, it's calling the employee BO field. You can see this endpoint, the rest endpoint. And here you can see this endpoint returning the data. 
returning the data only as department D002, department D003, department D001. And if you will go to the payload and the header here, you can see this is the request payload. They added the department field as department only. So here, whenever user is going to select any value, and again, after selecting the value, whenever we'll click here, it will again call the endpoint. So here you can see that you now it's called the five times, three times this endpoint. If again I will click here, you can see it will call new add new call here. So each and every time it's calling the endpoint to get the data from business object and display the data using service data provider variable. If you go to the console, you will be able to see the call. Every time, whenever we are selecting any values and we are calling, calling, giving the option to get the values, here you can see they got the value. This value is stored in the variable service data provider variable. Each and every time, whenever we are going to do that one, you can see. So now the same way we are able to add the, we are able to add the ADP. So once we will add the ADP, every time, whenever value we will select, it will not call rest endpoint. Because the ADP variable will call the data first time and it will store the data permanently in the variable. So whenever we will show here, it will display the data from that variable only so that it will not make a call every time. So let's implement how we can implement here. So implementing that, let me add one more heading here as and this heading I will give the name as ADP using ADP. And now again here I have to add the combo box. And now I want to display this combo box data not using this variable, the SDP, using new variable that it will be ADP. So for that first we need to create the variable. For creating the variable we need to create the type. What kind of type will be for the AD variable? So as you can see here they created the type as items and that items having the endpoint department. Now the same way I will create one variable. So click here type, go to the from endpoint the type i will select the business object and i want to get the data as i know that i am going to create array variable so there is no required to get all so i will select the get one next here i will give the department only the column so that array variable will having only the department column go finish so now you can see the new variable create new type created the get employee bo so instead of bo i will change the name get employee get emp department type so now new type is created i will create a variable based on this this type only so go to the variable and here if you will see once we'll click on the variable i will give the name i will give the name as var underscore emp department at this is adp so i will use atp adp now here you can see this is the type. If I will select the type a string, this variable will be created by a string type. But we have to create the variable as a array type so that it can store multiple values. So instead of this a string, I will select array data provider. And now click on create. So you can see the variable created and this variable having the type as array data provider. Now we have to provide the a structure. For providing the a structure, you can see the item type. And here we will select the variable new type we created get employee dp type and here we have to provide the key attributes and the data filter attributes so i will select department in both as this variable having only one attribute or uh, object having one attribute as this department so go to the type here you can see the department only we have only one department so i use that one the variable so now our variable var employee department adp is created now here the first requirement is to assign values to that variable so that that variable can be mapped here map it using this combo box right so here you can see once we added the combo box and here added the business objects it automatically map the data with that variable the employee bo list sdp the same way we will map this combo box with that new variable we created the array data provider variable and every time when this combo box added with the value if you will go to the all here we have one more properties to display the value and the object type here you can see the option key option is the value the value of the variable option and the option key is the attributes 
you can see the label as department. So whenever user is going to click here, this is the label. And behind this label, we have one value. That value is here. The same we have department in this case. So it's the same thing we will do manually here. So the first we have to assign the variable value to that array variable. So when we want to assign the variable, so we want whenever the page will load, that array variable should store the value. So now we have one VB inter event. So select page anywhere, not on any compo component. Just select the page here. You can see the event. So once you will go to the event, you can see new event. Select here and click on this VB inter event. VB inter event it means that page load event. Remember. So now here we want to store the value value from the business object into that array data provider variable. For that we need to get the data from business object. For getting the data from business object, we have endpoint call, and that endpoint is the rest endpoint. So I will add the action as call rest and this action will this call rest action will ask the endpoint to call so select this here and here you can see the business object this is the employee bo and the employee here we want all the department all the department is stored in the business object so here i will select get employee this will it will return back all the employee details select now here you can see Whenever we are, if you will go to the page inspects, whenever we are clicking here, it's calling the endpoint. And if you will go to the network here, this endpoint having the field as data, department field only. It means it's calling the endpoint and getting only department column. So the same department I want to use only, right? I don't want to use all the columns in the gate. So here you can see we call the endpoint, rest endpoint, and here we have field option. So click here to add the mapping and here I want in the field, I want to provide only mapping department so that it will return department column only from the rest endpoint. So now here we added on the things. Now this rest call will return the data in response and this data I want to store in the variable, array data provider variable. So drag this assign variable, select the variable. So this is our variable. Let me check the variable we created with the name of ADP. So you can see the where EMP data ADP is our variable and dot data is the data we want to store. So in this data, what we want to store, you can see this is a symbol of array. So as this is array data provider, right? If you will go to the variable, you can see this variable, right? We created ADP, this variable having the type as department and this variable is array type. That's why we have the data. So now again, go to the action here and what value we want to assign, expand here. And here you can see this is the response of the rest call, right? The rest endpoint call. Expand here. As you know that the data, the variable employee bo low list adp dot data we selected, and this data is the array data, right? Array format. So same we will go to the body. In body we will see that here we have item as array. So we will map this array with that array, right? So save, and you can see the var employee department adp dot data that is the array is mapped with the response array. Now it's done. So whenever page will load, it will call the endpoint and it, whatever response it will get, it will store into the variable. Now go to the page design and now that variable we have to map here. So select the combo box, go to the data and here in the option we have to select the variable. So this is our ADP variable. So remove this null and map this variable here. Save. So as you can see this combo box is added with the SDP. Now the second combo box is added with ADP. Now here we have to go to the all and all here we have one more properties that option one, the option key, expand this option key here. And here you can see that we have the label and values. The label I want to go for department and the same the value will be for the department only. Now done. So here you can see the message showing combo box instead of that we have to change one right so go to the label hint here we will check select department done now run the page so when we run the page here you will be able to see it will call only one endpoint here you can see the page loaded but it didn't call the endpoint why because if you will go to the console here in the console only it's called one time the endpoint the rest endpoint here this rest endpoint to get the data and whatever data it's return back it's stored the data into that variable using the action chain we added right here you can see the pg 
page VB enter action chain. In that action chain, only we store the variable in the data. Here you can see the page dot variable. The variable name is var underscore employee dot data value having array of four. This four variable we store here. You can see the value. This four value d one d zero is And once we will click here, it will display the data. And if you will go to the network, you want want to be able to call. They get the call every time. And if you will go above one, we'll select. You can see it will call the one rest endpoint here. So every time we will call, it will call the rest endpoint. It's not displaying. Here, sorry. Yeah. Now here we will select here. You can see it's calling. But if you will select here, it will not call any endpoint because in the AGP it's call only one time when page loaded and get the data stored into variable and that variable we are displaying here. So every time we are clicking here, it's really faster than the SDP. So whenever we are clicking SDP, every time it's loading. Why? Because it's calling the endpoint to get the data. But ADP is not going because ADP having the data stored in that variable. So this is the differences between ADP and the SDP. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other queries and you want to ask anything, don't hesitate to ask in the comment. I have provided the link, WhatsApp group link in the video description. You can join the WhatsApp group for discussion. Thank you so much again for watching this video.